Hi, it's Eve Rain, and um, so as the new year has come, I've been noticing a lot of um, fear, fear coming up around, um, like, living as an, you know, artist and, and the kind of inevitable um, rejection or disapproval that I know I'm going to go through. And um, it's been a surprising thing that this has come up so strongly because I feel like I've kind of identified with like not belonging for such a long time. It's kind of like, yeah, why would I start caring what people think? think now um but I think it's like and I you know in this year I've already um gone out of my comfort zone and, and you know performed in front of people several times and you know felt that kind of um like had to be really clear that my intention for expressing myself was not to get a certain feedback um, and that the success of um, a performance or an art piece doesn't depend on what other people think. Um, so I think that part has, you know, that part of me has strengthened, you know, the belief in just the clarity about why I do what I do. But um, I don't know, I guess maybe because I know I'm going to be coming out even more and I've set dates for, you know, to perform my show in a more um, concrete way than I've ever done before. Like I actually have, I've like rented space, you know, and um, people need to actually pay for it to come and, and that's all new for me and so I think um, and just you know there's just so many stories about to 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 make it uh, to make it I mean like first of all there's no guarantee that that you're ever going to get recognized or appreciated at any level and um, and if you do get to that place, um, it's usually like a pretty, like it's just part of the deal that um, not everyone's going to get what you do. And um, yeah, so anyway, just noticing a lot of this coming up. And at another level, which is also related, um, I've been noticing a lot um, since being around my parents so much lately that there's a fear when I, um, like I, I keep worrying about them getting sick or dying or, um, it's like, I know that this is like a very precious time when, you know, all of us are healthy and that it's almost like I'm not comfortable with the peacefulness because I know it can't last. And, um, and I know this is ridiculous. It's like, okay, so you're going to feel bad about something before it's even happened and not be able to fully enjoy the present moment. But it's almost like, I don't know, in a way that awareness helps me, I wouldn't say enjoy, but realize how precious this time is. Um, but I don't know. It's just another way that I feel like I didn't realize I was like such a coward, but it's been showing me um, how I also have been like this in in romantic relationships it's like i'm i'm like so afraid of the idea of like losing someone that i don't really i don't think i've ever really let myself be completely vulnerable um so it's kind of the same idea it's it's like um not 
yeah, not letting myself fully enjoy something because I'm kind of preparing myself for the, for its inevitable end. And um, so I went to watch La La Land, this movie, and um, if you care about, you know, not having the plot spoiled, don't listen anymore. Um, so I, I, I was surprised that I wanted to watch it, but I, I just sensed that it would be moving for me. I mean, I, I knew it was about like two artists trying to make it. And obviously there's, you know, a love story involved. So when I saw it, um, of course, what really hit me is like, you know, it's an actress and a musician, but the actress, so she's not getting any of the roles she's auditioning for. And then um, her lover inspires her to go back to writing plays, which she used to do, and, you know, make her own role instead of instead of trying to get accepted or approved of to fit into someone else's stuff, make your own thing. And so she ends up writing her own one woman show, uh, which is, you know, what I'm doing. And then she um, performs it and, you know, no one shows up, like very few people show up and she hears a couple people saying like negative things and um, she feels like a total failure. And she ends up like giving up on acting and on LA. And um, I just, I'm just watching this like, oh my God, like this is totally, um, the path. I mean, there's like every artist I know is just, why does it have to be so much like rejection, feeling of failure, you know? Um, and, in the movie, she's done it for six years, and I know a lot of artists who've done it for 10, 20, 30. I mean, people that I admire who are doing great work, they haven't been discovered, you know, they aren't like externally successful, sometimes till they're like 60 or 70 years old, um, you know, and if not after they're dead, like so many artists we know. And I guess um, maybe I'm just coming to, to terms with that or the parts of me that, that are still, you know, I have a strong ego and, the, you know, there's definitely a part of me that still would like to be successful in normal ways. Um, you know, it's, it's hard to, um, to be rejected over and over um, as a sensitive person. And, oh, and again, in the movie, um, on the more personal side of it the two don't end up getting together I mean they get together but then you know they don't end up together and I realized um again just I'm such a romantic but it's almost like because I feel so deeply I just when I think about something like that like oh if I was like really deeply in love with someone and then I ended up you know we just the relationship changed or I ended up with someone else or they did like just the idea of that is just crushing to me because the even though you know I there are other times where I feel so detached and like you know I really see us all as like infinite beings and like everything is like in constant state of change and transition and um you know, we're all one thing. So it's not like, oh, if I don't have this person, you know, my life is going to end. But I think I'm afraid that, you know, the human part of me the, or the smaller part of me, it, it's hard to keep that um, kind of expansiveness at the same time that I'm allow myself to go really deep into something. And um, I mean, I think this is the challenge of everyone's lives, of relationship, right? Like how do we maintain our um, our sense of autonomy and freedom and like that soul um, infinite space while also being really present and vulnerable to the human experience. And uh, anyway, I just sense that um, 
all of that is is coming you know in terms of um just just needing to be even more vulnerable and open than I feel like I've already been and um and the idea of that um is really scary and I know that um I think in my fear I'm I'm like kind of forgetting or maybe because I've never experienced it like the the beauty and the bliss like the other side of it like the reason I have lipstick all over my face the reason why um maybe not the reason but that we need to open to that like level of um risk or possibility of pain and loss um you know, it wouldn't be there so strongly if it wasn't something beautiful, right, that you were afraid to lose. And um, it's just like, you know, being in the game. Like, you have to be in the game to lose. And I think I've kind of not been fully in the game in, in a lot of ways. And, um, and it's just remarkable to me because I, you know, in general, I don't think of myself as being weak or um, cowardly, I, I, but just noticing like the ways that I still really am. I'm so afraid um, of being hurt deeply because I feel like, I feel everything, you know? So like to, to feel even more, um, yeah. And Oh, I'm going to tell you some um, messages I got from the goddesses of the temple that have to do with this. Um, so, Mother Mary came in and she said, you know, there will be joy in it. Like, when I totally let myself, let what's inside of me fly out and give myself permission to do that, uh, it will feel joyful. And then Guan Yin said to be like, girl that's surviving alone in the woods. And that came from um, the personal story of Guan Yin. She, her family was murdered and she um, fled in a state of complete like trauma and shock and was kind of like feral in the woods for a while. And um, I've been reading uh, the Earth's Children series, a book series. It starts with Clan of the Cave Bear. And the main character in it, Ayla, she um, is left in the woods when she's like five. Her family dies in an earthquake. And um, then this clan adopts her. And anyway, as she she's ends up living alone again later in life. And um, she ends up discovering and inventing all these kind of different ways of living um, that she wouldn't that are very innovative because she didn't have anyone telling her like this is the right way to do something, this is the wrong way and also because she had to survive um, and so that's also what it reminded me of it's like what Guan Yin was saying when she said you know it's time to be like that is like to be that independent in thought to to allow myself to be completely um, to live as if, you know, there are no social standards. There, there is no one telling me like this is a way, or um, to to be completely independent, um, and and allow myself to be open. And then Ma Mary Magdalene said, "Yes, same message, but different way." She said, "It's to to be the rebel that I am, like the way she was." And then I got totally scared because I'm like. I'm not strong enough to be like Mary Magdalene, like all this shit and flack and misunderstanding she's had. Like, and she said, the, the strength that comes when I'm just who I really am is so far beyond anything that anyone else could give me or that they can take away. Um, so that's the message. <laughs>